Everyone knows that one player who never misses any volleys. No matter how hard you bang the ball at them, they get it back every time. And if you get into a quick hands battle, you can consider yourself toast. Your best option is just to hit to the other player if they're standing at the kitchen. Watch this full video and you'll be one step closer to becoming that player. We also hit a secret giveaway at some point in this video, so pay close attention. To start, I wanna go through all the technical aspects of having consistent and effective volleys. One of the most overlooked aspects to having better volleys is using our legs and using the right footwork. For one, whenever we're waiting for the ball at the net, we wanna be in a nice and low position. We should have a wide base, bent knees, and our hips should be back. Try and have good posture though. You don't wanna be hunched over. This way, you're in the best possible position to react to a shot, regardless of where your opponent hits it. When it comes to footwork at the net, less is more. So if the ball comes to you, try not to take unnecessary steps. If you do need to move, usually you wanna step with your outside leg. Occasionally, you may need to cross over if you're really stretched on the backhand side. But try to stay square to the court if you can. Another thing to focus on is that your head is still throughout the point. If your partner's hitting the ball, you definitely wanna try and see what kind of shot they're using. But don't fully turn your head and look at them. If you do this, by the time you look forward, the ball could be coming directly at your face. Try to watch what they're doing with minimal head turn. This goes for when we're on the move too. Try to move in a stable way to where your head is steady and you aren't getting disoriented by your movement. The more your head moves, the harder it will be to react to your opponent's shots. Because remember, we wanna be able to react to more than one hard volley. If we lose our balance on the first hard volley we get, then our opponents are gonna be able to take advantage of us on the next shot. So we have to remain stable as we move around the net. So as a reminder, when we hit our volleys, we generally wanna keep a wide base with our hips back. This way we can counterbalance our body weight and not fall into the kitchen. Now that we've gone through what we need to be doing with our legs, let's talk about what we should be doing with our upper body. I think that the number one thing that'll help you on your volleys is always going back to a strong ready position between every shot. This means have your paddle out in front, lean slightly towards your backhand side. Many people like to use the 11 o'clock analogy. While it's leaned to the left, you still want the tip of your paddle to be centered between your eyes. If you cheat too far to your backhand side, then it's gonna be hard to react to your forehand. One thing I see players doing wrong is they start out the point in an awesome ready position. But as soon as they get their first ball, they drop their paddle and lose their form completely. If you wanna get multiple tough volleys back in a row, then you need to return to that good ready position after every shot. Looking at the actual strokes themselves, the most important part of your volley technique is that you have the right grip. The best way to tell that you have the right grip is that you can seamlessly hit your forehand and backhand volley without having to change it. If you're switching your grip when you're going from your forehand to your backhand volley, this is something that you definitely need to change. It's just very hard to react quickly if you're also having to flip around your grip. So if you don't have that figured out, I encourage you to switch to the continental grip. When you have this grip, the paddle face will be perfectly up and down when you hold it in the center of your body. In terms of your motion, just know that the harder the balls hit at you, the more compact your swing will need to be on your volleys. If it's hit slower, you'll need to take a bigger swing so that you can generate your own pace. But if your opponent's blasting the ball at you, you should use a more compact, stiffer motion where you get power from your opponent by blocking it back. When you take a big swing, it makes it significantly harder to time these shots, so you need to stay away from this when your opponents are hitting hard. Now that your technique's down, Let's go over the two main situations where I see players struggling with their volley reaction time. The first is when your opponents are back using drives and they're blasting the ball at you. The second is when you get into a quick hands exchange, both players are at the kitchen line and you need to react to multiple tough volleys in a row. Looking at the first situation, being able to handle drives is an important aspect of becoming a better player. Like I said before, if your opponent's hitting a hard shot, this is where we want to use a compact, stiff swing to where we can block the ball to our opponent's feet and keep them back. You want to try your best not to hit these volleys short. If you do, you're just giving them an easy path to the kitchen. You also want to try to keep these volleys low and at their feet so they can't pick it off out of the air. To make this work consistently, you really need to focus on having that ready position out in front. And remember, if you're too loose on these harder volleys, there's a good chance that you'll mishit them or pop the ball up. The other main situation I mentioned is when we're in a quick hands exchange. I see a lot of players lose these battles because they get off balance and they lose their form. Step one to getting better at this is to always have a good base and use the proper footwork that I talked about earlier. Another reason that people lose these rallies is because for some reason, when they start going at it with somebody, they feel like they need to assert their dominance and win by going through them. They seemingly forget that there are a few key targets they need to aim for to make it trickier for their opponent. In order of effectiveness, your three main targets are the middle, the right shoulder, 
and the line. Usually, if you're in a quick volley exchange, it'll be smarter to aim for one of these than it will be to try to win by just reacting quicker. So put your ego aside and try to win by being the smarter player. In the event that your opponent takes control, I see so many players trying to hit hard volleys until it's too late. Remember, you can always reset the point by dropping it into the kitchen. So try not to go for hard volleys if you're clearly not in control of the point anymore. On the other hand, if you do take control of the point, you should try to aim for one of the targets that I just brought up. If you get a higher, slower ball, try to go at their feet too. All right guys, now that we have this strategy down, the only way we're gonna increase our reaction time is by drilling these situations. The first drill I want you to do is for handling hard drives. All you're gonna do here is have one player stay back and work on their drives, while the net player does their best to hit the ball clean and deep. We need to be very intentional when we do these drills, taking all the strategical and technical stuff that we talked about into account. Remember, we wanna use compact, stiffer volleys when we're responding to fastballs. Really try to connect with the ball here in the center of the paddle. When your opponent's hitting hard, you need to focus on hitting the ball in the sweet spot so that you don't miss hit it. All right, now I wanna go through a three drill progression where both players are at the net. In the first, we're just gonna be going back and forth. When we're doing this, you wanna go at a pace where you can still have decent length rallies, about 10 shots minimum. Also, try to make sure that you're hitting both forehands and backhands. You don't wanna favor one side. Once you get warmed up, you can try to increase the tempo a little. In our next drill, we're gonna take a step in and do the exact same thing, but here, we're a little bit closer to each other. So we really are testing our reaction time. Try to position yourself six inches in front of the kitchen line and use the same mindset here. Start off a little bit slower, then increase the tempo. In the last drill, I want you to go back behind the kitchen line and start off by hitting four volleys back and forth. After the fourth volley, you play out the point half court and you try to win the volley exchange. Try to use all the techniques and strategies we talked about earlier so that you can win here. You can even keep score here, which is a motivating way to try even harder. This drill is probably the best way to get better at winning quick hands battles. And make sure to send this to your partner so that you can do all these drills together. If you don't have anyone to drill with that's as fast as you, the wall is an incredible way to work on your quick hands and reflexes. Think, if you hit volleys against the wall a few minutes per day, you're going to hit thousands of more shots per week. These are the kind of reps you need if you actually want to increase your reaction time. The wall never misses and it keeps up with your speed no matter how fast you go. It's an unbelievably efficient way to train. In terms of increasing your hand speed, this is one of the best ways to do it. Always make sure to be using some sort of references when you do wall drills, because remember, it's not just about having quick reactions. You also need to be able to place the ball well in these situations if you want to be effective against another player. The dink pad provides the perfect references for these sorts of quick hands drills on a wall. As you can see, there's a reference line so that you can consistently keep your shots low, and there are targets to aim for so that you can move the ball around to the key weak points that I talked about earlier. If you want to check out the dink pad, we have it linked below. Also guys, we're giving away over $300 worth of prizes to one of our subscribers. This includes one of our portable nets, three packs of lead tape, and a private 30 minute online lesson with me where we can pick apart your game and take you to the next level. To enter, all you have to do is like this video, subscribe to our channel, and comment what type of video you'd like to see us make next. On November 1st, we'll announce on our Instagram who the winner is, so make sure to follow us there too. Getting quicker reactions comes from a combination of using the right technique and intentional practice. Follow the instructions of this video and you'll get quick results guaranteed. And if you want to learn how to hit jaw-dropping serves, watch this.